my sword. Steel is my body, and fire is my blood. I have created over a thousand blades, unknown to death, nor known to life. Welcome to this new video on my channel. Today we're going to talk about the Drixer Roach and yes, a little bit changed, so you need some new gear, but the basics are the same as the mods before. But we'll go through every little piece of the character. So without a break, we're going to start with the character with the gear and with the ability score. And yeah, let's start right off with the ability score. As always, you're going to do with strength and dextry, dextry for the critical servity and strength for the physical damage boost. As many of you maybe mentioned, uh, there is no quite high incoming healing from the technical enchantments anymore. So we don't use them anymore. We're going to use the dark enchantment and for the feet, we also don't use the rusted iron leggings anymore. We will go for the, let's see where it is. We will go for the fine forged gators. So the infernal forged armor for the 200 power every five seconds you are in, count, in combat and it stacks up to 24 times. And basically it has the same stats. So it's quite nice to use that. Basically for the weapons, yes, lion head weapons are still good but you also can go for the celestial set there's a small difference in damage but uh, yeah if you get them you can use them if not yeah never mind they're not that great but still a little bit better yeah that's the weapons for the arms we are using the lion guards raid gloves or the spike defender van breast for the five percent damage per stack if we can consume them and if you can't you get the damage resistance which is also quite nice to not get that much damage in fight so for the armor we stay for the ebonit stained hide and if you have the new one so the where it is it's not really new it's just a possibility the stealer of the starch hide it also gives you five stacks of uh, power if you do a certain amount of damage, which is the same effect when on the Avenid's Tide Height. And when you have the Lion Guard's Raid Hat, or you can use any other hat you like more. For neck and waist, I go for the Call of Evil set because of the 2.5% more DPS. You also can go for any other set. Basically, if you want to do it, correctly and want to get the highest dps you also can use the baphomet set again but you lose so many hp if you use the baphomet set so it's no reason to use it but it's still a possibility to use it for the rings i use the striking ring of master for three percent more melee power damage and the critical strike for sure and the twisted gold ring for three percent more outgoing damage as the shirt i use the ebonet state raid shirt for three percent more damage if my stamina is over 75 percent and for the pants of outfitter uh, for the trousers i use the pants of outfitter for more action point generation so basically the stats you need in the new dungeon are 90k or higher but 90k are the caps and for combat advantage, you need 140k. And it's, it's, it's great to have 500k uh, HP, but uh, you also can do it with 470k. So 
it is possible to do it with lower HP. But if you can get to the 500, you should take the 500 HP. For the artifact set, I always use the Trona, so the from the Tales of the Old, the free artifacts from that, because of the HP bonus and the bonus of the Embalmed Storytellers Journal is also very great if you are if you don't have to use a buff artifact. So for the enchantments, I use the Billet Torn enchantment in the Web enchantment slot and the Bark Shield enchantment for the Armor enhancement slot. And in every other slot, basically I use, so in Defensive and Offensive, I use Radiant enchantments. Except for one slot, I use one Tenebrous enchantment during 15. And for the defense, uh, for the utility slots, I use uh, complete dark enchantments for more stats overall. So let's go on with the companion, because companion gear is also gear. So I use the Ivy Crown Grimoire of Companion, the Torch Bell of Companion, and the Gold Leaf Grimoire of the Companion. Uh, Mostly you can cap your stats if you get one defense offensive part. So mine has defense and accuracy. It is possible to reach these stats also with a different setup of companions gear and with a little bit different in the character. I have one solution uh, now in on the screen with a screenshot. You can just check it if you want. And yeah, let's go on with the companions themselves. I use the BB, Baby Deep Crow Presents, the Raptor Instincts, the Alpha Compi Iron Golems Presents for the 16,000 maximum hit points and 2,000 defense, and Padiri Wisdom for 4% more damage versus bosses. And for the mounts, I go with the 550k maximum hit points. Uh, the bat swarm, but if the group ne needs something else, you can still switch it for more buff or defense buffs. So for the insignias, I go with complete brutally or dominance insignias. I use some brutally to get my armor penetrations up, and I also use the assassin's convenient. So I lose 1,000 of your defense, deflect, critical avoidance, and awareness, and you gain 1,000 armor penetration, accuracy, critical strike, and combat advantage. It's pretty nice to stack, uh, cap your stats. For the rest, it's the same as the mods before. So Command Dance Maneuver, Shepherd's Devotion, Artificia Position, I don't know, Gladiator Skull. So yeah, it's their insignia boons, but uh, yeah, they don't do that much. Let's go on with the boons. Basically, I use the HP bonus and the uh, power boon. And then I always have the movement speed and the companion influence. And for T5, I use critical servity and recharge speed. For the master boon, uh, you can use focus regulation or bloodlust. And down here for the rest of the boons you have, just take the stats you need to cap your stats. At the guild stronghold, I use the HP bonus and the power. If your guild has the critical servity bonus, bonus uh, I would recommend to use the critical servity bonus. But if you don't have that, just use the power. And on the utility slot, it's always great to have the revive sickness, so you can you uh, so you can reduce the effects of res resurrection sickness stacks. So yeah, that's basically all the gear stuff, and now we go on with the powers. For the next mod, I use still Duelist Flurry and Gloaming Cut on single target. And for the encounter, I use Lashing Blade, Wicked Reminder, and Assassinate. For the daily, I use Shocking Execution and Whirlwind of Blades. But here I only use Shocking Execution on the boss, so this is just 
yeah, to fill the spot. For the class features, I go with Invisible infil Infiltrator and Oppressive Darkness. Since they fixed or they made Skullcracker uh, work all the time, I use a Skullcracker on the boss. So I go with Toxic Blades, Master of Shadows, Skullcracker, Back Alley Tactics and Shadows Flurry. And for the boss, so for single, single target, you just go with some Dulisk Flurry and the Gloaming Cut and the Wicked Reminder, Invisibility and uh, how it's the name, Lashing Plate and then the Assassinate. Basically, you need to uh, keep in mind that Assassinate gives all the damage bonus if you are behind the enemy or you use it in stealth. So if you are behind the enemy, there's no reason to use stealth on assassinate because you don't need it. But on lashing blade, you should always use your stealth because you get the 50% additional crit conservity to the attack if the attack crits for sure. And if you have your daily ready, so you're using shocking execution, you can do it that way just that you use invisibility or stealth, how it's called, uh, for lashing plate, you use your daily and you have stealth again and you can use it for assassinate. But there is no um, reason to use it if you're standing exactly behind the enemy. But if you can tell, assassinate using with stealth is still great and it's stronger if you can say if you're behind the enemy than using the stealth for the lashing plate. So only if you can say you are behind the enemy, don't use it for assassinate. But if you can say uh, that you are behind the enemy, don't. Uh, if you can say you are behind the enemy, use it not for assassinate. And if you can't say, use it for assassinate. That's what I wanted to say. So you all know the Dulis Flurry. It's the same as the last mods. So you can attack the enemy and you see the stacks on the enemy of the Duelist's Flurry. It's the bleed damage and you have here 10 stacks. Uh, you always want the 10 stacks. So basically what you have to do in fight, you have to keep in mind that you hold up the 10 stacks all the time. So if you can hold up the 10 stacks, you're perfectly fine. So in your rotation, you just uh, want to integrate all your powers uh, while you don't lose the Duelist Flurry in combat. And it's hard to say what exactly you have to do because it's much a feeling. So you'd have to try it, attack sometimes, and you can keep it and feel it how to use it exactly. So... For the powers we are basically finished and we are going to switch to the mob groups basically what is changing is the feats so we use duelist expertise instead of skycracker because skycracker is just great against one enemy duelist expertise is still not the best against more enemies but it's better than the skycracker and the last feat changes from shadows flurry to execution and we are changing some encounters so we use blade flurry smoke bomb and path of blade for the path of blade we basically use it before we can go to the enemies so if this is the enemy mob group i use blade of how it's called path of blade here when i get in the mob group use self use the Blade Flurry and then the Smoke Bomb. And then you can use Blade Flurry again because you used it in stealth. So we have no cooldown on the power. And if you have your daily up, you can integrate your daily in this rotation. Because if you use your daily, you get your stealth refilled. So you can go Path of Blade, go in the mobs, 
use lashing plate flourish so it's called when the smoke bomb daily stealth plate flurry and plate flurry so you can use it three times which uh, increases your damage a lot and basically all the mobs should be dead at this point yeah that's basically all the <laughs> basic information you need to know about the trickster roach uh, if you have some questions just write me down in the bell the comments and um, yeah that's basically all I have to say about the trickster roach have a good weekend or a good week uh, if someone asked themselves why this video took so long to record uh, I waited for the new mic to come so uh, I need to change the settings a little bit more so it could be that the audio quality is not the best, but I'm trying to find the best settings for this microphone so you can get more lovely voice to hear. Let's see you next week or next next video and have a great week.